Thank you, Massimo. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. So, this is a totally different topic. Uh, this is uh, dedicated to elderly patients. And uh, this study was funded by the French Ministry of Health. And again, I'd like to thank uh, Derek for helping us uh, improving the JAMA manuscript. As you know, we are facing on a daily basis the challenging uh, question whether we should or we should not admit an elderly patient in an ICU. And in fact, there is no guidelines or uh, recommendation um, available. So we design a, a study and we discuss very much about the, the design of the study. And finally, we, we found that it was impossible to randomize the patients individually. So we came up with a cluster uh, design. And so the, the, the uh, methodology has been published and also in the supplementary electronic material of the JAMA paper. So I will go briefly in the methods of this uh, study. So this is an interventional uh, cluster uh, study. The inclusion criteria were patients above uh, 75, which is the threshold for being uh, old in, in France and to be able to enter geriatric units. The patients were recruited in the emergency department and they had to have at least one condition of a pre-established uh, list that was obtained through a consensus method. And we wanted to focus on good candidates, that is, patients with a preserved functional status as assessed with an activity of daily living equal of or above four, with preserved nutritional status as assessed in the emergency department, that is, we don't have the weight of the patient, just rough estimation of the nutritional status of the patients, and with no known active cancer. So the methods, there were two arms, a control arm, there was no specific recommendation regarding ICU admission either to the emergency physician or to the ICU physician. While in the other arm, the interventional arm, there was a recommendation for the proposal of the patients uh, from the uh, emergency department and for acceptance of the patient in the ICU department. So we wanted a shared decision between the emergency physician and the ICU physician and to involve as much as possible the patient if possible and the family if they are there. So the clusters were hospital with at least one emergency department and one ICU, and we randomized the centers according to the number of ED visits and the presence of absence of the geriatric ward and the location within France, Paris area versus all the regions. So the primary endpoint is six months mortality, but we have also secondary endpoint, hospital mortality, Percentage of ICU admission, for sure, we were expecting to have a higher ICU admission uh, rate in the intervention harm. But also, and this is probably one important aspect of this study, we need a qualitative uh, outcome uh, and a long-term outcome, that is at six months. Place of living, functional status, and comparison between baseline, and also quality of li life that was assessed with SF. Uh, 12. We calculated the power of the study according to our previous and we estimated mortality should be 32% in this group of uh, selected patients, again, preserved functional status, no active cancer and no obvious cachexia. And we calculated that we uh, had to recruit 3,000 patients in order to prove a reduction of mortality at six months of six persons. So here are the flow charts. You have uh, centers uh, randomized in the standard strategy group and center randomized in the systematic strategy group. And we had to uh, have an inclusion period longer in the standard strategy group in order to obtain the, exactly the same number of patients in both arms, that is roughly 1,500 patients in both arms. We had only one patient 
refusing uh, to be included in the study. And uh, 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 we had to withdraw his uh, data from uh, the final analysis, which was an intention to treat analysis. The encouragement curve, so it took us three years to include all the patients in 24 centers across France. The case report form, we had uh, data collected about the physicians uh, involved in the decision-making process, either in the emergency department and the ICU, the circumstances of the ED visits, general practitioner information, the referring person present or not, and who is this re referring pe pe person, and also the wishes regarding ICU admission. We collected uh, data on, on, on patients and uh, obviously comorbidities, uh, functional status, and also wishes regarding an ICU admission, and I think this is an important aspect of the study, and also data uh, to compute a SAPSI uh, score. The decision making and the final uh, 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 destination of the patient uh, within the hospital or sometimes transferred to another hospital in case of no empty bed in the ICU. The uh, hospitals take characteristics, length of stay, mortality and discharge location. And also for the patients admitted in ICU, the, the procedures that were performed during the ICU stay. So the results. So the patients. First, we are dealing with real old patients. Even if the threshold to be included in the study was 75, you can see that the median age was 85. So we are really dealing with elderly patients. Predominantly uh, female patients. And most of the patients had comorbid uh, 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 Situa uh, com comorbidities, uh, mainly related to, to heart, but also to the respiratory uh, tract. We are dealing with severe patients as assessed by the SAPS 3 score, and the patients that were included in the systematic strategy group were even sicker than the patients admitted in the standard strategy group. The median baseline uh, activity of daily living score was uh, perfect. That is, it was six, and the maximum value you can get is six. So we are dealing with a uh, um, um, selected uh, group of elderly patients because we wanted to, to um, avoid uh, including uh, patients with a very high mortality rate related to this poor baseline condition. And the initial clinical diagnosis, you have to remember that the patients were included in the emergency department. So there is no uh, surgical plan surgery. So we are dealing only with urgent uh, situation and mainly medical situation. And the, 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 the clinical diagnosis that were uh, uh, observed was respiratory failure, shock, cardiac disorders, and coma for the four uh, uh, more frequent uh, situations. What about the triage? Uh, the ICU was full, that is, uh, there was no empty bed in 19% of the case. It was similar in both groups. The physicians asked the patients what he wants and uh, it was much more frequent in the systematic strategy group, more than twice in the systematic strategy group compared to the standard strategy group. And we, when you ask the patient about his opinion regarding ICU admission uh, in the systematic strategy group, uh, the patients were more in favor of being admitted in ICU compared to the standard strategy group. It means that maybe you are presenting ICU differently if you're allocated to be in the uh, systematic uh, strategy uh, uh, harm. And, uh, and for sure, the patients that were uh, in uh, uh, the um, cluster of the systematic strategy group were more often admitted in ICU, either in the same hospital or transferred to another hospital. 
while patients in the standard strategy group were more often admitted to intermediate care uh, or specialized units. So this study is um, a kind of binary uh, um, representation of hospital uh, intensive care unit versus other wards, including uh, intermediate care wards. What about the triage process? Uh, Roughly 15% of the patients uh, visited the emergency room during the night. It was similar between the two. Who took the decision for orientation of the patient? In the emergency department, it was a senior uh, physician in most of the cases, but not uh, 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 in all the cases. While uh, in ICU, uh, the physicians uh, were uh, usually uh, experienced with more than two years of experience in, in intensive care, uh, but, uh, and it was more frequent uh, in the systematic strategic group. So the decision, which is a difficult decision, is, uh, uh, is made, at least in France, by uh, senior ICU physicians. And the prim primary referent, and this, this was very important because we had to get information at six months, so we had to know who to contact at six months. So sometimes the, the people were there with us, or sometimes they were contacted for the follow-up. Identified general practitioner, uh, about two-thirds of the cases and similar, and, and the perceived burden uh, for the family dealing with elderly patients, it was uh, uh, acceptable average in uh, three-fourths of the cases. We had pretty uh, low number of protocol violations, mainly related to uh, an ADL score below four. For patients admitted in ICU, so as you can see, we have almost two times more patients admitted in ICU in the systematic strategy group compared to the standard strategy group. Uh, we, again, we're dealing with uh, old patients, 84. Again, patients in the systematic strategy group are a little bit sicker uh, according to the SAP3 score. Uh, median length of stay was a little bit longer in the systematic strategy group, even if the p-value is, is not different. I'd like to, to emphasize that most of the patients received real ICU procedures, so they were not there for only surveillance. You can see that um, less, uh, more than 80% of the, the patients had received uh, an ICU procedure, either mechanical ventilation, renal replacement therapy, or catecholamides. So this is the, the main slide. Uh, that is the outcome. So the, 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 the main uh, uh, end, end point was deaths at, at six months. Uh, the deaths at six months was 45% in the systematic strategy group and 39 in the standard strategy group, which is significantly different. But you have to remember that the patients in the systematic strategy group were sicker, so when you adjust uh, the analysis, the difference is no more uh, 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 significantly different, but if there is a tendency, it is not uh, uh, for uh, uh, being in the systematic strategic group. For sure, the uh, ICU admission rate was higher in the systematic strategic group. In hospital, mortality was higher, but, uh, and still higher after adjustment. And qualitative assessment at six months uh, Decrease of ADL, it was similar in both groups, but there was a decrease in ADL, as you can see, about two-thirds of the patient had a decrease of activity of daily living at, at six months. And when you assess quality of life uh, with SF2, uh, SF12, uh, no difference between the group, but pretty low SF12 uh, value. The mental component of the SF12, which is usual for elderly patients, is higher than the physical component and a little bit higher in the systematic strategy group. But you can see that the absolute difference is very uh, small. The Decaplomayer curve, the unadjusted uh, curve, uh, uh, showing a difference in, 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 in favor of the standard strategy 
and the p-value is significant. And after adjustment and the Cox model, you can see that the, the, the p-value is no more significant. So the baseline uh, uh, ideal was, was uh, very uh, nice. And at six months, a lot of patients had a deterioration of the functional status, uh, but it was similar in both groups. So the follow-up, I don't want to, to spend too much time on that, but it is important to notice that where the patients are living at six months and uh, how, how they are living and how we get the information at six months. And you have to notice that we have very, very few patients lost of follow-up. We have uh, roughly 40 patients out of 3,000 patients lost of follow-up. A nightmare to get the data. So I would conclude that a recommendation for a systemic uh, intensive care admission in critically ill elderly patients, yes, led to a higher intensive care unique admission rate, 61 versus 34, but had no impact on adjusted survival at six months. So this study suggests that the absence of long-term benefit of a systemic, systematic intensive care unique admission in critically ill uh, elderly patients. Here are the centers in France. Most of the centers were located in Paris region. And I'd like to thank the uh, emergency department physicians, the ICU physicians, and also the team uh, uh, doing all the monitoring and the statistical analysis. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Bernard, for your remarkable work that is open for the discussion or to comments from the audience. Can see, is any, a, maybe it's a, isn't it implicitly a, an ethical question there, if this is true? Again, uh, we should not, over-interpret the results. What we have shown is that a, a, a policy to systematically admit in ICU elderly patients in the emergency departments uh, does not translate into a better outcome. But still, 34% of the patients in the standard uh, arm were admitted in ICU. So it doesn't say that we should not admit elderly patients in ICU. Probably it says that first we need specific tools to assess elderly patients, and we, we published in intensive care medicine a paper about the frailty uh, scale, which probably is, is an important tool to help in the decision-making process. And second, I'll ask a grant uh, uh, in France for that, maybe the discharge location. And, and I, I would have some, um, um, I think we, we can raise the hypothesis that if we discharge the patient to a geriatric ward, the, uh, the long-term benefit uh, will be uh, higher than if we discharge the patient to a regular ward. Thank you for your uh, nice work. Very short question. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have any data about delirium? Excuse any me? data about delirium? No. Okay. Thank you.